Today we're going to look at a nice problem from the 2011 Harvard MIT math tournament. So let's look at what it is. So our goal is to find the number of integers satisfying these three conditions. The first two are kind of short, but the last one is really probably the most important. So the first one is that n is a multiple of 5. So that restricts us down to 0, plus minus 5, plus minus 10, plus minus 15, so on and so forth. The second one is that n is between 121 and 1,331. So now we're restricted to, let's see, 125, 130, 135, all the way up to 1,330. Those are all the multiples of 5. And then our last condition, and that is when expressed in base 11, the rightmost digit is strictly greater than the leftmost digit. Okay, so let's see how we might parse out what this third condition means. So notice I've color coded that I'm gonna, and I'm gonna try to use that color coding as we apply these conditions. So here we've got our green condition, which was this third condition. So I'd like to first observe that in base 11, these numbers right here, so I guess this is a combination of the green and the blue, but I think maybe it's okay because we're mostly talking about base 11 here. So in base 11, we have 121 is equal to, well, we know it's equal to 11 squared, but that's gonna be equal to 100 base 11. So it looks like quote unquote 100 base 11. And that's because, well, this 11 squared is really like 1 times 11 squared plus 0 times 11 to the first power plus 0 times 11 to the 0th power. That's a standard base n expansion. Okay. And then also in base 11, 1, 3, 3, 1 is equal to 11 cubed. And so that's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0 base 11. Okay, great. So next up, what we want to do is take our integer n, which is meant to satisfy these conditions, and I'm going to write it in base 11. So that means I can write it as this number with digits a, b, c, and then I'll just put down there that it is in base 11. Okay, so the fact that it's in base 11 means that this notation is corresponding to a times 11 squared plus b times 11 plus c. And I'd like to point out that since we're in base 11, we know that a, b, and c are all from the set 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 10. Those are our possible digits in base 11. More generally, if we are in base n or base b, the possible digits are 0, 1, up to b minus 1. So regularly, we work in base 10 and observe our digits are 0 to 9. Okay, great. But now let's use a little bit of this uh, condition over here to observe the following. So this left-hand digit a needs to be strictly bigger than zero because if it's not strictly bigger than zero, well, first of all, we don't have a three digit number, but also notice that it will not be larger than this 121. So we automatically know that A is bigger than zero. And then we've got this condition here where the rightmost digit is strictly greater than the leftmost digit. Notice that the rightmost digit is C. So we've got C has to be strictly bigger than A. Okay, great. So next up, what I want to do is use this magenta relation to gain some information. So let's observe that we kind of use the blue condition already, this size condition right here. And in fact, that was motivation for this thing to be three digits in the first place, or in other words, A being strictly bigger than zero. Okay, so now this magenta. So let's observe the following. 
If we have a, b, c in base 11, we can write that as a times 11 squared plus b times 11 plus c, just as we did up there. But now I want to reduce this thing mod 5. So that's going to be congruent to simply a plus b plus c modulo 5. And that's because, well, 11 is pretty clearly 1 mod 5. It's 1 more than 10, which is a multiple of 5. But that means that 11 squared is also 1 mod 5. So now let's go ahead and link these two conditions together. So what do we know? Well, we know our number A has the form A, B, C, sorry, our number N has the form A, B, C, base 11. And A, B, and C come from this set right here. And we know that zero is less than A, which is less than C. And we know that A plus B plus C is congruent to zero mod five. And that's in fact, a complete translation of our conditions over here. Okay, so you might say, well, what about this condition where it's less than one, three, three, one? Well, that just fixed us at a three digit number. So in fact, you can think about these two, you know, size constraints as fixing us strictly bigger than a two digit number. This is the smallest three digit number and then strictly less than a four digit number. Okay, so anyway, now let's see what we can do with this translated version of our conditions. So let's recall that the translated version of our conditions over here amounted to the following. Our N is a three digit number base 11, three digits because it was between 121 and 1,333. A, B, and C had to come from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to, let's see, that should be 10. And that's because we're base 11. And then we knew that A had to be bigger than 0 and less than C. Bigger than 0 because it has to be a three-digit number, less than C by this condition. And finally, A plus B plus C needed to be a multiple of 5. In other words, it has to be congruent to 0 mod 5. And that's because we had this condition up here, here that the whole number had to be a multiple of 5. Okay, so let's see what we can do th with this translation of our conditions. I'd like to explore a little bit. So let's look at the possible values of A plus C and then the choices for B to make this condition where a plus b plus c is 0 mod 5. Okay, so let's see. We could have a 3 as a value of a plus c. Notice that that's the smallest possible value of a plus c. That corresponds to a being equal to 1 and c being equal to 2. So then let's observe the choices for b here are 2, and seven. So B could be equal to two and seven. And then, well, let's see, we could have A plus C equal four. That would be like one, three. Notice it couldn't be two, two because we need strict inequality there. And then if uh, A plus C is equal to four, that gives us possible choices for B of one or six. And now I'd like to observe the following, and I think this is like an important observation, and that is that for these two cases, this gives us the possibility to add in the end to five or 10. And what I mean to add to five or 10, I mean the A plus B plus C is adding up to five or 10. Okay, so now let's look the possible value of A plus C being so that's a possibility, 1, 4, or 2, 3. But if a plus c is a multiple of 5, which it is, then there are in fact three choices for b. b could be equal to 0, 5, or 10. Okay, and then, well, let's see if we can go on from there. And, well, what if we have a plus c equals 6? So that would be like one five or I guess two four. And so in this case, we could have B equal to four or nine. And then, well, let's look at the next couple of cases. So let's see, six, 
we'll have seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I think that'll be far enough to kind of see what's going on here. Um, I'll let you fill out the full chart if you really want to. So let's see, A plus B is seven, eight, nine, or 10. So if A plus P is seven, then the possible values for B are, let's see, three or eight. If A plus C is eight, the possible values for B are two or seven. And then if A plus C is nine, the possible values are one or six. And we like to think about these as being grouped together into like one larger case. And that is for everything to add to 10 or 15. Notice that if a plus c is equal to 6, well, then it's impossible to add it to 5. And so we could add to 10 or 15 in the end when we're talking about our a plus b plus c. And then, well, let's go down here to our last case that's written here. And that is the case when a plus c equals 10. And observe that our choices for b here are 0, 5, or 10. Because again, just like this case up here, we already have a multiple of 5, which means we could have b being any multiple of 5 from the choice set up there. And now you can just extend this further. I think you can maybe see what's going on here. Notice that if a plus c is not a multiple of 5, so that would be like this right here, 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 and this right here. So that's a plus c is not a multiple of 5. There are exactly two choices for b. Whereas if a plus c is a multiple of 5, there are three choices for b. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that information. So we just finished the argument that if a plus c was incongruent to 0 mod 5, there were exactly two choices for that leftover middle digit b. Whereas if a plus c was congruent to 0 mod 5, there were exactly three choices for b. But I'd like to make this observation, which is that 3 is equal to 2 plus 1 which really means that regardless of what a plus c is, we get two choices. And then if a plus c is 0 mod 5, we get an additional choice. So really what we want to do is just count all of the cases together and then add in the extra possibilities in the setting that we have a plus c, a multiple of 5. And so that's what we'll do with this final calculation. So here we've got the number of possible values of our n. So let's notice that that's going to be 2 times the number of elements in the following set. And that is the ordered pairs a and c, or a comma c maybe I should say, where 0 is less than a, which is less than c, which is less than 11. Okay, great. I guess I could put here greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 10. It would be the same thing, right? And so, well, that's corresponding to both of these cases. When a plus c is incongruent to 0 and when a plus c is congruent to 0. We're multiplying by 2 because that's the two choices for b. And then we've got to include the additional choice for b in the case when a plus c is 0. And in that case, we can just enumerate all the possible times where a plus c is a multiple of 5. So that's going to be the number of elements in the following set. And that set is going to be the set of ordered pairs uh, 1, 4, 1, 9. So that would be if like a is 1, we've got two possibilities for c. And then let's see, 2, 3, 2, let's see, 7, or sorry, 2, 8. And then let's see, 3, 7 would be the next one. And then 4, 6 would be the one after that. And then let's see, 5, 10 would be the one after that. 6, 9 would be the one after that. And then finally, the last ordered pair is ordered pair 7, 8. So those are all the ordered pairs A, C, where A plus C is congruent to 0 mod 5. And notice we're only adding one on there. 
So just to be really thorough here, let's notice that this two and this two are corresponding to this two. That's our two choices for B. And then this plus one here is corresponding to the plus like the hidden one right here. That's corresponding to the extra choice if again, A plus C is a multiple of five. Okay, so now I think it's not too hard to finish this thing off. And let's see, this is gonna be two times the number of elements in the following set. And so we could have A equal to one, that means C could be two, C could be three, all the way up to C could be 10. We could have A equal to two, which means C could be three, C could be four, all the way up to C equals 10. And then we count all the way down to A equals nine and C equals 10. And then plus, well, you can just count up there are nine elements in that set. But now I'd like to observe that the way that we've written this first set is kind of triangular. So there are how many? There are nine things in this first row, eight in this second row, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one in this last row. So now we could put all of this together. This is gonna be two times this sum one plus two plus three, all the way up to nine plus an additional nine. But luckily, we probably know the formula for a triangular number. If you don't, I guess you could add all of that up. But what you'll end up with is 2 times 9 times 10 over 2 plus 9. So the 9 times 10 over 2 is going to be the 1 plus 2 up to 9. But then an easy calculation shows that that is equal to 99. And so 99 is the number of integers satisfying these three conditions. And that's a good place to stop.